Hello and welcome to the channel. I'm Omnus and today I will react to the top 10 Queens of the Stone Age songs. This is recently requested by Strato Z, so you know, he requested us, there you go. I believe I already said that, but great intro, fuck no, great intro as usual. Um, yeah, I do like the band. Uh, I've reviewed their album Songs for the Deaf and ever since I reviewed that album I fell in love with them. So yeah, they are great. What are they? Desert rock band, alternative rock band, kind of a straightforward kind of band. I do, I do really like them. They are one of my favorite bands ever. Spoiler alert, you know, for, for that list that might come out, you know, someday. Um, and of, you know, especially of this century. They are one of my favorite rock bands of this century, so definitely a, uh, a favorite of mine. Um, yeah, songs that will make the list. I've seen this list already multiple times because I was really into the band. Still am, but you know, um, you know, at the moment I'm into a different band, but that you know changes from time to time. So there you go. Um, yeah, songs that will make the list. Uh, what would that be? Uh, no one knows, of course. That's like. That's basically the song I've always heard from them, but I never really, you know, picked up on them. So there you go. That song, Go With The Flow. Um, I love a uh, first it give it, you know. All of those songs for the deaf songs. Try to say that ten times. They're all really great. I'll, I, you know, I love all of those songs. You know, Flawless Record, one of my favorites for sure. I heard it one time and it instantly became one of my favorites. So there you have it. Um, yeah, so those songs, um, Little Sister, that was a big hit, you know, with the cowbell, that's pretty funny. Um, I, by the way, I love that one song, Like Clockwork, uh, Smooth Sailing, I love that song, I love the music video too. So, those songs, uh, I Disappear, it's also from that album. Uh, that is a really fan favorite. Really haven't gotten into that song yet, but I do really love um, the song that I literally just said, uh, "Smooth Sailing." That's pretty much half of the list already. Oh yeah, and I love "Sick Sick Sick" um, from Era of Vulgaris. I love how fucking dark that song sounds. In my head. This rock band just goes yeah, this sounds kind of like a jukebox kind of song. Oh, I paused it at the perfect time right there. Some nice ass. Flow. This band is kind of like a classic uh, sex, drugs, and rock and roll band. I love it. To They're kind of like a retro band. Threes and sevens. I also love the production on, um, well, they're gonna mention it soon though. From one of the, you know, their debut album sounds really fucking good in my opinion. Little Sister. I mean, they're a really fucking flawless band though. I mean, they haven't really dropped a dud yet. That's pretty good. Uh, no one knows. I mean, um, this is kind of like a stretch right here, but this moment right here, where they're when they're going into a fucking guitar solo and drum fill, but Dave Grohl, uh, pretty much a peak performance right here. You know, since I'm not a huge Nirvana fan, but I love his performance on this album. So it's definitely not wasted. You know, Dave Grohl's definitely a talented drummer. And I'm happy that he drummed for Queens, you know, on this record and like Clockwork. And those are cons considered like two of the best records, you know, together with Rated R and, um, well, does anyone like songs for Lullabies? I, I really like that, but whatever. Really great, really great albums. Uh, smooth Sailing. Yeah. This is like one of my top three songs of Queens. I fucking love this song. Only one way up. Fucking ass. Uh, fuck's sake. Smooth sailing is 
a raunchy groovy rock song with an infectious riff. Well, there's already one at at the ending right now. According to the bar. I mean the music video is so fucking weird though. Well, they're basically like wasted guys going into a bar and doing crazy shit. That's it, basically. I do really like that. Holy shit. Holy fucking shit. <laughs> not, uh, not musically wise, but I got this fucking ass at right here. Oh my god, that's fucking not right there. Damn, girl. There's a girl with like an orange fucking panty in my face. With a huge fucking. Well, not a, not a bills, but like a huge. Oh my god. I'm getting, I'm getting a high as shit right now from, uh, from Pussy. Hell yeah. I fucking love this song. Oh my god. First It Give It, such an amazing song. First It Give It. I'm getting teary because this song is so great and I just got like the greatest ad ever with like a fucking Pussy shot right on my face. Fucking love life right now. <laughs> oh my god. I mean, if I ever get like fucking YouTube famous, I'm gonna get instant demonetized from my fucking vulgar behavior. Sexual shit and all that. I mean, you got all of our Nick uh, Oliveri's naked too. And in my opinion, you did it better than uh, Rebel Chili Peppers in its entirety, so there you go. The hard rock and stoner track reached the UK top 40 and was accompanied by a music video memorable for showcasing Nick Oliveri's nude bass playing. Uh, sick, sick, sick. I love a fucking dark song sounds. And I mean you gotta love the fucking fucked up music video where the band is like chained to a fucking chamber or something or you know to an oven and they're you know getting fucking baked literally and um, you know eaten um, I won't say eaten back to life fucking cannibal corpse on but well, yeah, you know, it is a fucking, it is literally a cannibal corpse right here, so, kind of too literal, I'm too literal right now. By far the most experimental. And I mean, I also love the gimmick where they're like playing as a band in the oven. I believe that it has to represent an oven with that orange light. You gotta love it. I mean, if you just just look at that woman right there, you're just like, don't stick your dick in crazy. For sure. Dirty, distorted, and mean. Yeah, that's pretty and dirty. Tommy and second guitarist Troy Van Leeuwen slamming away at a riff fuzzier and dirtier than the carpet of a New Jersey Motel Six. Tommy spits flirtatious venom into the See, microphone, see, weaving see. a tale of lust that's so so wrong, but. I mean, you're dead, so you can't really resist either way, but you know, whatever. It's, it's great music, shut the fuck up. Uh, how is this one called again? Mexicola? Mexicola. Oh, there you go. I love how this song sounds. It sounds incredible. Really fuzzy, really like in your face. Mexicola is a fan favorite from the band's debut album. Performed in the 
mammoth sounding C standard tuning that Josh so often employed while How's this other song called again? That that song is like so it sounds so fucking great. You know, that whole baby album. But how does that song you know how, how is it called again? I, I forgot Just where. Rock band Kaius. This song is All of Kaius too by the way, great band. Last of withering desert heat. And I've heard someone say that um, Joss Homme is kind of like the Quentin Tarantino of music. I fucking love that. <laughs> I mean, if you look at it, everything that he touched, uh, touches turns into fucking gold. So I do kind of agree with that. Josh's voice sails right over the top of it all, riding the riff instead of competing with it. It's just so, so great, man. I love the production. ...to the style Robot Rock, expressing the desire to make their music instantly recognizable. Seems like he did a great job. I was just like, uh, don't get me wrong, I love Rated R2. But it is kind of like the sophomore slump of their discography. I never really got into it because it's, you know, it sounds more groove oriented, more like, not per se folky, but it's kind of like more alternative, which, you know, makes it a fan favorite, I suppose. But I always preferred Songs for the Dead because it's kind of like more in your face, it's catchier, it's more interesting, I think. Um, I never really got into Rated R, pretty much any track, but I do really like it though, it's a pretty good album. The Raiders R track never really stick into my head, but you know, I believe this came out in, in 2000. It's still one of you know 2000s highlights, I would say. Still a great song, but never really got into this um, kind of you know sophomore slump. I never really got into it, honestly, but it's still great. Raiders R was the beginning of a clear stylistic separation from Caius, Josh's previous band. Featuring a much fuller lineup than the first album, things take a turn for the bizarre as soon as you hit the play button. Better Living Through Chemistry is a sprawling, echoey affair held together by Nick Oliveri's thundering bass. driven at others melancholy and wandering it somehow manages to feel heavy and airy at the same time a combination that is to this day perplexing and hypnotic but this ending groove sounds pretty good though I do like the groove of this ending it's a pretty good song in general but like Raiders are probably one of those records that you kind of have to listen to more to really appreciate the uh, you know little details that are happening in the song. It's kind of like one of those grower albums, I suppose, and you know eventually it will will become your favorite. I guess. Uh, I disappear. Never really got into this song either. It uh, sounds pretty good though, but probably have to hear the studio version. Though. It probably sounds better. Number five. I appear missing. But this track got like, I believe this track got the fucking 91 on fucking best ever albums. Like, the the track alone is ranked, you know, rated a 91 out of 100. So, that's like a perfect rating right there. So I probably love it, but I don't know. Bone Lake Clockwork isn't the heaviest album Queens has recorded. It's the most thematic by far. That haircut of John Romy though. He, he look, it's kind of an old comparison, but he kind of looks like he just had a baby. You know, not he himself, but he's like a dad now. It's really weird, but... That's how he looks, in my opinion. That's for Van Leeuwen. Ah, he has to be Dutch now. That's such a Dutch name. Troy Van Ling. The tension builds and builds, culminating in a soaring guitar solo and a pain vocal refrain before segueing right into the dark final track. Sounds pretty good though. 
That was sad. Number four is another rated art trick, I believe. How is this one called again? Number four, the lost art of keeping a secret. There you go. Which was just very direct with my question, so there you go. What the hell is a music video though? <laughs> like a, a person is under the lens or something and they're looking at a zit, what the fuck? And a girl got AIDS or something. This is such a weird music video. It earned radio airplay through its catchy and sexy sound, but it's the bizarre accents that made it a Queens of the Stone Age song. Muted punky rhythm guitars and a whole host of strange instruments below and above make for an infectious and unforgettable tune. Perfect for any acid tripping secret agent. Number three. Oh, what the fuck was that? The girls are like licking the blood of the guy, I believe. Kind of like a va vampire sex joke, I suppose. This video was disgusting, but the song sounds pretty good. Uh, little sister. Three, little sister. This is probably their most. Punkiest uh, song, punkiest. This is probably my least favorite track of Queens of the Top Ten because I think that the whole uh, Lullabies to Paralyze was kind of, you know, it's still great for all, but I think it was kind of a misstep for the band, especially after the incredible, you know, rated R and songs for the deaf. Pretty much the first three albums and then. Lullaby Sparalyze happened, which is still pretty good, but it was a lesser album, Aerofil Gareth was lesser, and then they rose right back up with, uh, with Like Clockwork, because the bands kind of made a few missteps, still great albums, but you know, not as they used to be. So, um, yeah, this track is kind of too straightforward for me, it's kind of uninspiring, I suppose. Not a huge fan of the cowbell gimmick, but it is a thriving song though. It does get you going, which is a good thing. But it is my least favorite track uh, of the list, probably. Yeah, pretty much. Yeah, exactly. Punk rock roots. So. That's probably why it's my least favorite. I mean, the cowbell gimmick is funny, but. But musically it's not very funny or well, musically it's not very good i think it is not a cowbell i believe it says so it's a fucking lie to it uh, uh number two is that will ferrell on stage stage how is he called yeah will ferrell right you know not the red or chili peppers member they really look similar they look so similar they actually play drums together because they look alike. And never fails to get the crowd dancing along. Uh, go with the flow. Yeah, I've seen this list already, so fuck off. Number two, go with the flow. I mean, you gotta love this animation right here. Great. Go with the flow is possibly the single most radio-friendly song Queens has ever produced. Good morning, Palmer. like it's literally midnight at my at my time right now. But no, oh, whatever. That fucking um, when she grabbed her fucking uh, panty, her g-string. Hell yeah. Part in creating what may well be the best driving song the 21st century has produced thus far. Yeah, it, it is a pretty good driving song though, although I don't have a license, but <laughs> that's besides the point. It was nominated for a Grammy. Psychedelic as fuck to love it. Yeah, this is pretty punky too, but I really love the fucking power chords that they're, that they're using right here. Yeah, I love this sound right here, I fucking love this sound. Like, it sounds so heavy, you know, desert rock. It just sounds so fucking groovy and heavy for me. 
Thank you for our walk, fans. Before we unveil our number one spot, here are a few honorable mentions. Regular Joan. It's pretty straightforward, but I love the production on that day. We fucking love that. <laughs> you think I ain't worth a dollar, but I feel like a millionaire from Songs for the Death. This is such a fucking chaotic song. You gotta love it. I uh, burn the witch from Lullaby's Paralyzed. Aren't there like fucking three different burn the witches right now? Queen's burn the witch, Radiohead's burn the witch, and I, you know, I believe that. I think that Event Shamfold has a burn the witch song or album too. Do they have a song or album about it? Who fucking cares? I don't, I don't really care about the first two bands, so there you go. But I believe they do have a song like that, so do it on what you want. I said by the ocean from Like Clockwork. The drum is pretty good too. I thought that they had David, uh, yeah, yeah, David Grohl played the drums on the studio version, but you know, obviously he's not touring with the band because he has his own shit going, so good for you, David Grohl. Make it with you from Era Vulgaris. Definitely their weakest offering, I would say. Not a huge fan of this song particularly. It's still a unique song, and I think Era Vulgaris isn't the weakest album since it still offers, um, you know, what does it offer? Um, fucking diversity. It still offers, you know, some experimentation, and that's what I appreciate about Era Vulgaris. Even the fucking album covers experimental as fuck, so you gotta appreciate that. Not the, uh, well, I do, I do still like every album and I like Villains, but it's definitely the, the weakest offering so far because it's the it's, it's the least outstanding Queen's album, I would say, you know, pretty much anyone would say it, so there you go. Sabrina is, you know, the most uninteresting uh, Queen's sounding album yet, that's what I'm trying to say. No one knows, of course. I love the description, fucking freight train fucking bass playing, yep. Fucking peak performance right there, fucking perfect. I mean, it's it sounds like a classic rock song in a way, but it's also fucking tribal as fuck though. It's like a freight train, exactly. A perfect description about Watch Mojo for once, you know. Gotta appreciate that. Uh, yeah, you know, great bands. Love them, so definitely check them out. Check out Caius too. Great fucking band too. The Stone Age song. For more electrifying top tens published every day, be sure to subscribe to WatchMojo.com. You know, I love this band. Um, I don't think I've really got into them, you know, just in recent times, I would say, because I always kind of like to go with the flow and no one knows what's, you know, you can't really avoid that song. So that song I heard, uh, you know, sometimes. So that, that was pretty good. Um, what else did I hear? Well, I don't really think anything else out of those two songs. Maybe Little Sister, but that's kind of stretching it, I suppose. So, uh, yeah, definitely a, a band I would recommend. They have become one of my favorites in recent memory. So definitely uh, check them out because I really love them. Uh, Strato, you know, he, of course, requested it. So he is, of course, a big fan. 
I believe the last guy really likes him. So pretty much like my all my rock fans really like him. I believe that's my proc fan base is not a huge fan of them. You know, Phantom and Rock do are not a huge fan of Queens. I you know I asked um Phantom, he's not really digging them. He does like guys though, so do that what you will. You know, no no none of you guys give a shit, but you know, just just to explain this kind of, you know, it's yeah, you know, no good shit. Uh, yeah, yeah, the first comment is about Quentin Tarantino. Joss Zombie is like the Quentin Tarantino of music. Fucking like that. I mean, he has yet to make a flaw, though. I mean, that is true. You got all of the comment, though. Fucking hell. I already liked it, so there you go. Perfect analogy, exactly. What? How dare you, sir? Quentin Tarantino is a piece of crap, and Joss Zombie is like God, but real. You're calling Quentin Tarantino a piece of crack, crap, although you use a fucking uh, comma, and then you said N. That's not how it works, mate, but uh, sure, I'm gonna dislike that fucking garbage comment. So fucking true. The, you know, the, the earlier comments. Uh, yeah, fuck these comments. <laughs> I feel a song for the dead should have been here somewhere for sure. Uh, Palmer's is asking me about fucking a score play analysis video. What the fuck? Um, what do you mean with that? Oh, uh, find the fucking Rick Beato video. Uh, seen it already, girl and girl. Yeah, you know, I guess it's the best. Um, it, it's it's the best uh, showcase of Coldplay. There you go, great song, Clocks. You know that he's describing a Rick Beato. Um No one has mentioned Tangled Up in Plate. Haven't heard that song before. I think I, I think it's from Raiders R. Maybe I don't know. Or an ARTV is in the comments too, of course he is, fucking hell. Um, what else? The entire, uh, the entire album of songs for the Dev is a masterpiece, hard to say which song was the best. Yeah, uh, you know, all of them are great albums, there you go. Um, yeah, I don't really think that, you know, people are really, you know, they're just, just sharing their list and requesting other bands. Or they're not really doing that, they're just sharing their... Oh, hell yeah, do top 10 do metal bands, fuck's sake. Hell yeah. Um, still surprised this list wasn't shit. Don't get the popularity of Little Sister though, pills in comparison to the other songs on this list. Exactly! I love this comment because Little Sister is kind of an underwhelming song, I think, but whatever. Uh, surprise, surprise that Chemistry was, was on the list. There you go. It's easy for this list not to be shit when Queen of the Stone Age doesn't have a single bad song. Exactly. Well, I don't like Six Shooter. I don't think I've heard that song before, but I don't know. All death metal all the time. It isn't just only in the Eagles of Death Metal, like what the fuck is that all about? The, the, yeah, that's probably kind of like a specific band, I believe. You know, it's a joke band, I suppose. You know, it's such a misleading fucking title to uh, Eagles of Death Metal, while they're not even playing death, death Metal. I mean, come on, they're, they're, they're like a... Uh, they're like a restaurant, they're like Queens of the Stone Age, there you go. Uh, yeah, alright. Just saying, Bonnard. Uh Okay, I don't, I don't care. Uh, you know, we play the game to uh, take a shot every time on an assess. I don't care. You know, to her I say that a lot because a lot of the time, a lot, of, a lot of the time she says, um, you know, like uh, this song's underrated as fuck, man. Oh, I love this song. Um, oh, there's a great band. They need more love, and I'm like, I don't give a shit. <laughs> Um, and you know that's probably my most used word that I say to her. You know, not that not that I don't care about her, 
that you you know most of the time she's like she's like really deeply emotionally invested into something and i'm just like okay sure whatever but uh you know um if you want to hear about that then uh talk with me about it in youtube messages youtube chat in the comments you know whatever you probably don't care so i'm just gonna quit here Thank you for watching this video. Uh, let me know what you think about the Queens of the Stones in the comments down below. Uh, I really like them, so let me know what you think about them in the comments down below. Like, comment, subscribe in, uh, in the comments down below. Like, comment, subscribe to the to the video. Um, fucking hell. Like, comment, subscribe to this video and you know to the channel to see more videos like this one if you want them. And if not, you know, don't do it. Leave a dislike. You know, how, however you feel, do that. Uh, yeah, I've been honest and I will see you in the next video. Peace.